Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy video. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veteran Anatomy channel. In this video, we will talk about the anatomy of the thorax of the dog, where we are going to look at the anatomy of the lungs. And the next video, we will cover some other structures. So make sure to see the next video. So let's get started. So here, as you can see, we have a dog. Um, what we've done actually, we dissected the skin, the muscles, and finally we cut all muscles which connect the forelimb to the trunk and uh, the forelimb to the neck. And uh, we remove the forelimb completely, as you can see here. So after that, we try to keep just the first rib and the last two, three ribs. And the last two, three ribs are connected somehow to the diaphragm, which we are going to describe later. And after that, we cut all other ribs dorsally here at the junction between the ribs to the vertebra. And, you know, we cut also the ribs ventrally here you know, um, at the junction area between the ribs to the sternum. So for your for the orientation here, we can see the sternum. This is the sternum. Here we have uh, the uh, manubrium sterni. Here we have the first rib attached to the first sternibra, sternibra. And as I said before, we cut all the ribs so that we can remove them to look into the thoracic cavity. I will just put it to the side like this. Okay. So before we start talking about the organs, which we can see inside the thorax cavity, let me just remind you about the internal fascia. So in general, we say that the fascia could be divided into two parts you know the external fascia which we can see between the muscles or under the skin and we can divide them into superficial fascia and deep fascia this is the external fascia and we say that the internal fascia the fascia which we can see inside the cavities like that fascia of the thorax cavity which is called the endothoracic fascia and we have another internal fascia inside the abdominal cavity called the transverse, you know, fascia of the abdomen. This endothoracic fascia in this case cover the internal surface of the wall of the thorax cavity. And it covers also the diaphragm. So the internal fascia, which we can see inside the thorax cavity called the endothoracic fascia. The endothoracic fascia in this case is also covered with another membrane called the bloira. So the bloira is a very thin membrane consists of one layer of epithelial cells covers everything inside the thorax cavity including the wall of the thorax cavity and the organs which we can find inside the thorax cavity. We can divide the bloira into two parts, the parietal bloira and the visceral bloira. And from the name, the parietal bloira is that bloira which covers the ribs or the walls of the thoracic cavity. Which walls? We mean the lateral walls, that means the ribs from inside. We mean also the caudal wall of the thoracic cavity. And here we mean the diaphragm. So here we can see the diaphragm. And if you remember, we talked about this muscle, which is located exactly in this area and separates between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. That means everything in front of the diaphragm or cranial to the diaphragm is the thoracic cavity. Everything behind the diaphragm belongs to the abdominal cavity. Again, let's go back to the bloira. 
The parietal pleura covers the walls of the thoracic cavity, and in this case, we can also divide the parietal pleura into different parts. That parietal pleura, which covers the ribs from inside, called the costal pleura. That part of the parietal pleura, which covers the diaphragm, called the diaph diaphragmatic pleura. And even in some books, they name the pleura which cover the sternum from inside the sternal pleura. After that, let's move to the other part of the pleura, which is the visceral pleura. The visceral pleura from the name is that part of the pleura which cover the internal organs inside the thorax cavity, including, in this case, the lung, the heart, but not directly, because the heart is enclosed here inside the pericardium, and some other big structures found in this area in the mediastinum, and we will talk about them later. So that, that the visceral pleura could be also, according to its location, divided into different parts. So that means the visceral pleura, which cover the lung, could be called as pulmonary pleura. That pleura, visceral pleura, which covers the pericardium, the pericardium, the sac surrounds, you know, the heart, is the diaphragm, uh, the pericardic pleura, the pericardiac pleura. Um, part of the visceral pleura covers also what's called the mediastinum, and uh, in this case we will name it as mediastinal pleura. So as we mentioned the mediastinum, let me just tell you that inside the thoracic cavity, and because of the location of the pleura, so the pleura will form two sacs, two pleural sacs. The left pleural sac on the left side, which includes, includes of course, the left lung and the right uh, pleural sac. The space which is uh, located between the two pleural sacs called the mediastinum. Mediastinum is extremely important, specifically if you want to read X-ray pictures. So the mediastinum is that space located between the left and the right pleural sac. You will find that the mediastinum, inside the mediastinum, we have a lot of connective tissue, which include, enclose, you know, several organs, or structures which we can see in the space between the two pleural sacs, or which we can see in the space in the middle of the thoracic cavity. Which organs do we mean here? We mean the heart. We mean the big arteries from the heart. We are going to dissect all of them. We mean the cervicus. We mean the, uh, the trachea, the primary bronchi or principal bronchi. We mean the lymph nodes, which we can see there, and all other structures, which we are going to dissect in this video. So mediastinum itself, this space, could be also divided into a cranial mediastinum, the middle mediastinum, and the caudal mediastinum, or pre-cardiac mediastinum, pericardiac mediastinum, and post-cardiac mediastinum. The pleura, the pleura will form inside the thoracic cavity what's called the rhesus. So between the diaphragmatic pleura and the costal pleura, in this area, you will find that there is space where I put my, I can put my finger here. So according to the location of this space, we can give it a name. And in this case, we are talking about the costodiaphragmatic rhesus. Costo between the ribs and the diaphragm, just like this. The costodiaphragmatic rhesus. Why this space is here? During the inspiration and expiration, 
the volume of the lung will increase and decrease. And during the inspiration, in this case, this part of the lung, the same for the right lung, of course, which is the, this here is the caudal lobe of the lung, will extend into the rissus and fills completely this empty space. During the expiration, the air will be pushed away from the lung and the lung reduced in size uh, the way that this resource will be empty. So it's an empty space which will be filled and uh, uh, you know, sometimes during the inspiration with the caudal or with part of the caudal lobe of the lung and uh, because of the location again between the rib and the ribs and the, the diaphragm, we will name it as a costo diaphragmatic resource. We have another resource formed by the bloyer called the mediastina, mediastina resource. It's located deeper there. We will talk about this later. So let's firstly talk about the lung and after that we will remove the lung and talk in details about the mediastinum. So stay with me. So now let's go and talk about the respiratory system and the first things we can talk about here is the left lung as we opened the thorax cavity in the left aspect here we can see the left lung and after that of course we will talk about the right lung later so as you can see here the left lung in the dog is divided in general into two lobes the first one and between them there is a deep groove or fissure here to separate between Look, this is here the cranial lobe and this is the caudal lobe of the left lung. If you agree with me, you will find that the cranial lobe of the left lung is further uh, divided into two lobes or two parts, sorry. This is here the cranial part of the uh, cranial lobe of the left, left lung and this is the caudal part of the cranial lobe of the left lung okay another name if we want to uh, mention the latin name of them so this is the lobus cranialis and this is the lobus caudalis of the uh, left lung or we can say you know this is the lobus cranialis sinister and this is the lobus caudalis sinister the lobus cranialis is divided into two parts cranial and caudal parts cranial and caudal parts as you can see here here and before we move forward let me tell you that there is a small notch or space formed between the cranial lobe and the cal sorry the cranial part and the caudal part of the cranial lobe here to form what's called the cardiac notch cardiac notch here it's you know you know named like this just because through this notch we can see part of the heart and that's why we name it as a cardiac notch. So this area here is the cardiac notch. So it's the best place where you can put in live animals your stethoscope to hear the sound of the, the heart. The caudal lobe of the lung leads directly as you can see here on the diaphragm forming what's called the diaphragmatic surface here of the lung okay so in general if we want to talk about the lung we can say that the lung has the cranial extremity here, the caudal extremity here, dorsal and ventral 
borders. The lung has also two surfaces. The outside surface or the external surface or what's called the costal surface and the visceral surface on the other side. Because of the location of the lung here, which is connected or in contact with the ribs, you will find these impressions on the outside surface of the lung called the costal impressions. The lung is fixed inside the thorax cavity mainly but not only, mainly to the mediastinum through, firstly, of course, the principal bronchus, which, you know, leaves the trachea and enters the left lung. So in this case, we are talking about the left principal bronchus. The lung is also fixed to the mediastinum there by the pulmonary artery, which is a branch of the pulmonary trunk from the heart. The lung is also fixed to the mediastinum there or to the middle of the thorax cavity by the pulmonary veins, which leave the lung and runs to the left atrium. The lung is also fixed in its position by what's called the pulmonary ligament. Where can we find the pulmonary ligament? The pulmonary ligament, I hope it's clear, I have to move, uh, no, it's fine, so here, here, I hope, can you see this ligament here under my finger, this one here? This is what's called the pulmonary ligament extends in this case between the caudal lobe of the left lung and the mediastinum, as you can see there. I hope it's clear. So this here is the pulmonary ligament. Fix the caudal lobe of the lung to the mediastinum and we will look at this ligament on the right side again. Now we will try to remove the left lung and in this case we have again to cut the structures which connect the lung to the mediastinum or to the, to the middle of the, of the thorax cavity and here we mean the pulmonary artery, the pulmonary vein and uh, the principal bronchus and so on. Now I'm cutting some of the pulmonary veins so gently and slowly we will try to keep most of these arteries and veins attached to the mediastinum or to the origin of them now i'm cutting the principal the left principal bronchus so finally and cowardly there i have just to cut the pulmonary ligament the left pulmonary ligament and so finally we can remove the left lung again the left lung just quickly has a cranial extremity the phragmatic extremity or the caudal extremity we have the, the we have the costal service attached or con connect, connect connected to the ribs we have the visceral service. This is the visceral service where, you know, um, the lung is somehow connected or attached to the internal organs, including the heart and some other structures. Again, the lung here is divided, as you can see now, it's more clear, yeah? is divided into two lobes, the cranial lobe and the cow, the pulmonary lobe of the left lung, don't forget this. The cranial lobe is further divided into cranial part and caudal part in carnivores, okay? 
On the visor here, we saw the coastal impressions. On the coastal service, if we move it to the visceral service, here we can see another impression here is the cardiac impression where the heart was um, located. So this is the cardiac impression. Here we can see very clear impression. This is the, the aorta uh, impression, so the impression for the aorta, this big artery here. And uh, we have also the diaphragmatic impression here, you know, uh, because we say that the diaphragmatic service is uh, located directly on the diaphragm. So let me uh, here, uh, as you can see, we cut the principal bronchus. This is the principal bronchus, which will give at this level some uh, secondary bronchi, one to the caudal lobe, one to the cranial lobe, which will also give another tertiary bronchi, one to the cranial part and one to the caudal part of the cranial lobe of the left lung. And uh, a lot of other, here we have, uh, for example, the uh, pulmonary artery and all other small uh, blood vessels there are the pulmonary veins. They are filled, as you can see here, with rubber because we injected the circulatory system with rubber here to show you the uh, details of these uh, uh, veins and arteries. After removing uh, the, um, the lung, the left lung, this is what we can see. What we can see in general, the heart located inside the pericardium, this sac, the pericardium. We can see some of the big arteries coming from the heart, including in this case, the, the aorta. In this case, the aorta forms the th aortic arch and the thoracic aorta is here. And after that, in the abdomen, of course, the abdominal aorta. What we can see is the primary bronchus. This is the primary bronchus from the trachea, which is located there. We can see here, this big artery here is the left pulmonary artery and all the rest, these small blood vessels are the pulmonary veins coming from the lung to the left atrium uh, of the heart. But before we go into details, let me again talk about the mediastinum. Mediastinum, as we described before, is the space located in the middle of the thoracic cavity in this area here between the two pleural sacs, which are located left and right inside the thoracic cavity. The mediastinum, it could be divided into three parts. The first one here is the pre-cardiac mediastinum or the cranial mediastinum. This is the middle mediastinum here in this area or the very cardiac mediastinum and this is the post mediastinum or the the post cardiac mediastinum or the caudal mediastinum. As you can see and as we described previously the mediastinum which has a lot of connective tissue just in the middle of the thorax cavity and this connective tissue enclose a lot of structures in the middle. So, in the way that we can see that inside the cranial mediastinum here, we can see some blood vessels. Like for example, this is the left subclavian artery, which we are going to dissect all of them. But you know, as we can see it now, let's go through them. So the left subclavian artery, which comes directly from the aorta and the dog, don't forget this. Uh, before the left subclavian artery, there is a big artery here, very big, this one here. This is the brachiocephalic trunk, which comes also from the aorta toward the head and the forelimb. Brachiocephalic trunk is also enclosed inside the cranial mediastinum. What else in the cranial mediastinum? Part of the cervicals, part of the trachea, which are located down there. Uh, we have also the costodiaphragmatic, uh, cost costocervical tract, trunk, which is an artery. We have the internal thoracic artery here. Um, if we move, we have also um, here, it's very good also to mention the thymus, 
um, thymus, the thymus gland here. This, this is just the rest of it located in this area here and in the carnivores. Uh, this will represent the thoracic part of the uh, thymus gland. Uh, in the middle mediastinum, here is the mediastinum where, uh, which enclose um, the, 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 the pericardium and inside it, of course, the heart, uh, the, the, the aorta, the, the aortic arch and part of the thoracic aorta, uh, the principal bronchi, the veins, pulmonary veins, pulmonary artery, pulmonary trunk, uh, uh, and all other structures, uh, the end of the trachea, the acidicus which moves in this area. Caudally here, caudally here, we have the postcardiac mediastinum or the caudal mediastinum. Uh, the structures which we can see there, again, the, um, for example, the, the acidicus on the right side more. So we open the thorax from the right side. We have the caudal vena cava. So we forgot to mention the, the cranial vena cava in this area. Okay, and here let me tell you something. The mediastinum, which is the space again covered, the um, parietal pleura, uh, covers everything in the middle of the thoracic cavity and inserts finally on the diaphragm in this area. So it goes straight here and inserts to the diaphragm. And it has somehow two layers in this case. The left layer is the layer which we can see here. This layer here, this membrane here, okay, which goes and inserts to the diaphragm. On the right side, uh, we will see how there is the caudal vena cava comes from the abdominal cavity more to the right side to enter the right atrium. It moves a little bit like in oblique uh, course. That means the right part of the mediastinum there moves or leave the center of the thoracic cavity and move on the lateral surface of the uh, caudal vena cava, while the left one moves straight like this. So they will form behind the, the heart a small empty space called the mediastinal rhesus. The mediastinal rhesus. And in this case, we name it as mediastinal because this rhesus is formed just by the mediastinum not like that one here, the costodiaphragmatic resource. So mediastinal resource, this piece which we can see through this membrane, it's not 100% empty. If you look exactly, there's a structure found inside this space, which is in this case, the accessory lobe of the right lung. So the accessory lobe of the right lung located inside the mediastinal resource. Another structure which we can see here is this very important nerve. Uh, if you follow this nerve here, it starts actually from the neck area here and moves on the base of the heart and uh, innervates the diaphragm. So that's why this is the phrenic nerve. This is the phrenic nerve. Just above the phrenic nerve at the base of the heart here, we can see another nerve which we are going to dissect. This is the vagus nerve. So give me some time to dissect this area and I will come back. See you later.